Nations League triple header. We're live at Hamden. Welcome to Scotland HQ. Hello and welcome to Scotland HQ, live here at Hampden Park. It's 24 hours before we kick off our triple header of Nations League matches for Steve Clark's men. So what better way to get another Scotland HQ? Uh, we play Pol uh, we don't play Poland, we play in Poland next Tuesday. Before that, we've got Ireland on Saturday and kicking off tomorrow night at Hampden Park against Ukraine. Joining us tonight, we have star of Scott Squad and brilliant comedian Stuart McPherson. We've got the hero of Belgrade, David Marshall. And later on, we'll be joined by chart toppers. I was going to say hit parade, but that makes me sound dead old. But I don't know, whatever it's called now, LF System. Eight weeks at number one, amazing. And they kept, the boys from Bathgate kept Beyonce off number one, which is amazing. Uh, all that and more, we're going to have a look, uh, chat behind the scenes with Nathan Patterson and James McFadden, see how the Scotland and Everton combination come up, as well as a new look at the Scotland kit. Uh, before we do all that, we might as well welcome our first guests on. So, uh, at home, I know you're at home, but there's people kicking about. Please welcome uh, the brilliant Stuart McPherson and the god that is David Marshall. <laughs> Great. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. Nice to see you good. Uh, sit down, sit down, take your time. It's okay. We're only on half a minute, half an hour, David, don't worry. Um, I, I forgot we should have introduced our third guest. Uh, we didn't miss it. Uh, David, it's nice for you to be reunited with your old kit. How does it feel? It smells um, not great, if I'm honest with you. So this is the actual <laughs> kit that you wore out in Belgrade? Yeah, so I was asked to, um, if it would be okay to donate the kit to the museum so, after the, the, the game, yeah. So deep, deep down, see when someone asks you today, do you think, I could sell this on eBay for five grand? Did that, <laughs> ever, did that ever cross your mind? No, not at all. As I say, they got in touch and I think the gloves are there as well. Um, and as I say, I wasn't sure if it had been washed, but seeing it for the first time again, it uh, brings back some memories. But Have you had a sniff? I can sniff if you hear me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting it's not been washed, but as I say, it's memories for How, everyone. So that game, obviously, like 47 caps of Scotland, that game will be the one that people bring up the most, I'm guessing? Oh, well, yeah, of course, yeah, the only one. Um, <laughs> And the chip for the halfway line gets brought up oh. now and again. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to bring that up, but I, know you uh, I, I needed to point this out. I paid 175 quid for that ticket, so it cost me £3.50 for every yard you got chipped from. So <laughs> cheers for so that. It's a bargain man. then. I know, it feels it. Uh, Stuart, obviously, we'll chat more about everything else. Yeah, um, I noticed you've not got any shirts I've worn on stage. No, because no, no, they were all in Bernardo's, so that's why. <laughs> but we're chatting. Where did you watch the game? I watched it in a pub uh, on South Hill Street in Lauders, just a bog standard pub. Yeah. Chucked out at 10, sort of halfway through the second half of extra time, I think. And then I watched the, the penalties on my phone, just dodgy legal stream in some alleyway, which I'll never forget. I've still got a virus on my phone. I get like on my Google calendars, <laughs> I'll get like events in Arabic. Yeah. Because I was on some dodgy website, but it was worth it, you know? Thank I mean, you. of all the excuses I've heard for having a virus on your phone, that one doesn't <laughs> make sense, let's be honest. <laughs> and um, we'll chat, we'll go to Scott Scott. So, Stuart McPherson just finished the fringe. Uh, Scotland fan? Yeah. Uh, been, yeah, it's a nice top. Uh, Favourite Scotland player over the years? David Marshall, of course. If, if he's not here and we could afford a better player, who would you have said? Uh, Scott Brown. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I just, he's a Bamak merchant, isn't he? I love that. Yeah. You ever met him? <laughs> well, no, I have told you. I've, meeting is strong, but I did. Like, you know how like everyone remembers where they were when like JFK got shot? <laughs> I always remember what where did I was. What did Bruni do here? <laughs> <laughs> Estonia. I'll, I'll never forget where I was when Little Mix won X Factor. Because I was standing next to Scott Brown. Where were you? <laughs> it's at the Hollywood Bowl in Dunfermline. We're both getting our <laughs> shoes back, and uh, you know it's announced big loud music and yeah. everything. And because it was nice, because I got to watch him watch it happen. You know, because I wasn't, I was, I was looking at him, not the telly, and he was just looking at it like it was just like a blank wall. You know. So. <laughs> How did you feel when Little Mix won, David? Were you happy or? I'm delighted, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've actually been to a little mix concert this week. Really? Completely honest with my kids. Yeah, wasn't it? Like you said, it. with your kids. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. you and Bruni. No? Yeah. We chatted. We chatted there. So we were talking about the the Belgrade game. Obviously, like a career highlight. Is there any other Scotland memories that stand out for you? Because you're you won 47 caps, but it was over a long time. There's been we've been lucky enough a few times in Scotland history when you've had Gorham and Leighton together, and when you've had McGregor. Gordon Marshall together fighting against each other. Any other highlights that stand out for you? Um, it's been tough, obviously. We've never qualified for 23 years, so to pick a, a highlight that has <laughs> um, meant so much as that one, difficult. 
Um, we went close a lot of times, I think, on, under Walter and Gordon. Yeah. Um, I wasn't playing it in the game, I was on a bench in the game, but obviously Fa James McFadden's goal um, in Paris, I felt. What did you just do after that game? Um, pass, I couldn't remember. We, de <laughs> we, de we definitely never moment? celebrated like we did in Belgrade. Um, <laughs> We must, have, we must have had a game after. Did we have a game after it? I'm not sure. I'm unsure. It's gone, no one's gone back so we probably far. lost 2-0 to a 16-year-old George. Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> we, we, we lost to George, but I don't know if that was the next camp. Um, under Gordon Strachan, we went close. We beat Ireland at Celtic Park. It was a good mm. memory. It was uh, strange because we weren't playing at Hamden. Um, and that, again, that was a, a, a moment that I thought we were going, we were going to get over the line. Um, but yeah, ultimately, the, the, the Serbia game was the, the and, big moment. And let's ask you, you've obviously taking the decision to retire from international football. What, how easy a decision is that to come to? But also, what do you do with your international break now? Obviously, you're here. <laughs> like, what else have you been doing? Well, training. I was training today and training tomorrow at Hibs. Um, and then we've got the four days off to recover before, before we go again in the league. So, um, yeah, it was a massive, it was a tough decision. Are you missing it? Uh, th this is the first squad, um, so uh, listen, you miss it because you love it. Um, it was a big part of my career. Uh, I just felt it was the right decision. Um, for myself, I spoke to the manager, I I've thought about it for 48 hours after the Ukraine game. and It was mid-camp, but it was the end of a World Cup yeah. campaign. So I spoke to the manager at length and had a few days to think about it and, and, and came to that decision. Did you cry? It was tough, it wasn't, it wasn't tears, it was tough telling the manager because I, I have a lot of respect for him and um, bringing me back in to the squad uh, when, he, when he first got the job. Yeah. Uh, I felt it was if I owed him a hell of a lot, um, but it was, it, was a tough, it was a tougher conversation and I, it played out in my head, that was for sure, but um, yeah, ultimately I think What was, was tougher, that or a little mix? Little mix was a lot <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Stu, what, what's your thoughts? We've obviously got a triple header kicking off against Ukraine. We played them what two or three months ago. It feels like forever ago we played them, yeah. and they played us off the park. Yeah, no, no denying that. How how do you think we're going to do tomorrow? Well, I hate to be the you know the classic pessimistic Scotland fan. So with that in mind, I'll say we're going to do very well, and I'm excited to find out. By very well, do you mean win or just like be happy to be there? I don't know. Like at home, I do think we've got a chance. You know, like as you say, we we you know we didn't really turn up in the summer. It was like a weird game for a few reasons, and. Uh, yeah, I think after a wee bit of a blip, I, I do think we're gonna, there's going to be a resurgent Scotland, I hope, even without uh, Robertson tomorrow. I, yeah. don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm quietly hopeful, but it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? I think it also shows the strength and depth in Scotland where Andy Robertson, probably one of our many world-class players, is missing. Yeah. And it's not too much a, a big deal because you have someone like a Kieran Tierney or Aaron Hickey or one of them, Greg Taylor's been playing well at Celtic. Uh, David, what do you think about the three games? Obviously, we got absolutely scudded by Ireland as well. <laughs> So, got them on Saturday. We, I was, it's still in our hands. And also, qualification for this is so key that if we can finish second in the group, we'll finish second. And then seedings for the World Cup and the Euros. And if we're finished second in the Euros group, we qualify automatically. The, the draw is not until the 9th of October. So, these are three big games. Like, how do you think we're going to do? They're huge games. Um, I'm always optimistic with, with Scotland. I think the first half, especially in the, the Ukraine game in the playoff, was, we, we were poor. Yeah. We, did, we did play poorly in the game. But uh, I think for a number of reasons this summer, game didn't suit us, the change, I understand that politically it was it was difficult um, and the game went ahead, ahead when it did um, in March time we were flying, uh, we had a lot of injuries in the summer mm. so we missed some big players um, but yeah, everybody's playing well now as you mentioned, that Andy's out but Greg's been doing really well Aaron's been doing great down south as well so I, I'm optimistic, the Nations League for us has been obviously given us that moment that we managed to qualify yeah. for the Euros and we're a point behind Ukraine and we got to play them twice. So for me, it's a huge week. Um, first game's absolutely vital, absolutely yeah. vital. So if we can go and get that, I'm sure it'll stand us in good stead. Hamden's a difficult place for any team to come. So to have two back-to-back -back home games is, is massive. It's a difficult place for the fans to come as well in points. <laughs> we've all seen the games we've seen over the years. <laughs> uh, Stu, do you do what I do, right? Because I know football fans, Stu's actually a surprisingly good left-footed uh, player, uh, I know that would surprise you, David. Judging by your, the look you're giving me just now, uh, no, I could. do you do you do what I do and look out for Scottish players that are playing down south? Like I don't support an English team, but if yeah, there's like trying to pick them out the yeah. squads, but yeah, I could, I could offer something. Do you do you look out for players like say when you're saying Aaron's doing well and stuff like that? When you're looking for the results each time, 
Are you checking to see how well the Scottish boys are doing, or do you not really care throughout the year? No, well, you check the score, you check live score, you check the scores, you check if who, who's played, um, you check the subs bench, and then if MD's not in the squad, you maybe text them to see if they're injured or whatever. Yes, you're always keeping tabs, especially the squad members that you know um, quite well. But yeah, you're always you're always keen to, to see what's what's out there, young lads as well. We, Josh Doy get Hibs has just went abroad, so to keep tabs on him, he's another one that's got a bright future. So interesting to see his path in it. Yeah, players. Stuart, I know you're quite a culture person. See, we talk about Josh Doig's move out to Italy, Lewis Ferguson, mm -hmm. uh, going out to Bologna. Would you, if you were a footballer, I get the feeling you would move abroad at the first chance. Yeah, try and get to Serie B or something, get some pizza and pasta, just, <laughs> yeah. just get the sun Como, there for sure. Here yeah. you come. Stroll it in some, some Diddy team over there, yeah. And when you've been doing, you've been working in Scott Squad for how long now? <sighs> Good on. Years. Don't Years. Know. Yeah. Have you done any football story like uh, we did a um, Euro special during the Euros, which I, thought, I don't know if you're even aware of this, but we did like a, a skate scene where the chief had like all these memes that were like you saving the, oh, the penalty yeah. and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was mainly writing, because I write for the show now, I was just writing, tried to write like a sketch for every single member of the squad just to try and like meet them basically. Like, <laughs> so meeting ones were like me and James McFadden, like recreating his goal out in the car park and all that. And like, just like, just desperately trying to find a way to meet footballers, although it only ever happened tonight for the first time of the day, <laughs> through no use of man. And well, final, before we wrap this up, the question that I think a lot of Scotland fans who are watching this at home will be wondering is um, the goalkeeping situation. So um, we've been blessed over the last 10, 15 years to have brilliant goalies. We're getting to a point where you're all getting older, two out of the last three kind of mainstays and then retired from international football. What do you make of the future of the goalkeeping position for Scotland? Do you think it's a worrying Position, David, or do you think we've got enough people coming through that can step up to that? I think because the three goalkeepers, obviously myself, Craig and Alan, have just played so many times, you have to be given a chance. Um, I think it will naturally happen when lads... So, someday he'll, he'll take his chance and he'll move on. Um, Liam's now in position where he's, he's number number two. I think John McLaughlin's pulled out uh, yep. this week. But uh, John's playing for Rangers now. He's playing Champions League football, so that'll stand him in good stead. Um, I know John's not 21, 22, but he, he's definitely... He's younger he, than you, Steve, though, let's be honest. It wouldn't be hard, yeah. would it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's, it's the same as anything, though, I think, when, when players move on. Um, oh, there's always, there was always somebody there to come and take your position, and then, um, I'm sure when somebody will get that chance and somebody will take that opportunity. Yeah, I find it fascinating. I've been doing lots of Scotland stuff over the years, and see, there's always one position that people talk about. For a while, it was how do you fit Tierney and Robertson in? And then for a while, it was right back. But someone who has gone on and taken the position to be his own is Everton's Nathan Patterson. If you've been watching Match of the Day, you'll see the pundits raving about the weekend, a brilliant last minute tackle. Um, so we sent two people down to chat to each other that know a lot about playing for Everton and playing for Scotland. So James McFadden at the Scotland training camp chatting to Nathan Patterson. Let's take a look at it now. Nathan, how are you doing back up the Scotland squad? Looking forward to the games? Yeah, aye, good to be back up the road. Um, obviously, enjoyed the first part of the season uh, with Everton. It's nice to meet up with the boys again, it's been a while. Um, obviously, last time I was just recovering from injury, so it was a wee bit different for me, but obviously good to be back full of fit now. And it's a wee bit different that you're playing every week as well, isn't it? Uh, aye, it's, no, it's a wee bit abnormal for me. Uh, obviously, Rangers, I was a wee bit, obviously, second choice for Tatav, and then going down to Everton took me a while to get in the team, but and obviously the injury didn't help, but I uh, started the season well, and I'm starting to put my place in, into the team. I think you've started the season better than well. Aye, well. well, some may say, but you just need to keep your feet in the ground. Um, <clears throat> there's plenty more games to come this season, obviously. Each game gets different challenges because you're playing against top players each week, but uh, just look forward to each game as it comes. How, how do you find that? Because it is like top level players every single week. Uh, you need to be ready for that. That is, that is difficult. Um, obviously, each player is different. Each player have got their own qualities, and you're playing against, you know you're going to be playing against a player that's that's capable of a bit of magic each game. So you need to be fully concentrated the full time, and I think that's benefited me. Um, obviously, I'm still 20, so I'm going to learn each game, and I'm really enjoying it. And it's, each game's tough, but 
it's great to be a part of it. And you went, obviously, into a team that is, is, was in a relegation fight and obviously left a team that was challenging for titles, goes on to play in the European final. Was that different for you as well? Yeah, it was. obviously it was a tough decision for me to make, but an easy one at the same time. Um, as I said, each week it's a different, a different opponent you're going to face, which with different qualities, but obviously going to uh, the bottom end of the league to try and fight for points uh, was difficult, but now we've had a kind of new life to the, to the team. There's a new energy and there's a new belief in the team that we've got. That each game we can go in and we can win the game comfortably, and we just need to kind of believe that. And that we need to have the, the belief between obviously the boys as well to, to go and show it on the pitch. And how was your uh, Merseyside Derby experience? Yeah, looked like you enjoyed it. <laughs> it was good. Obviously, I've played in old firms, but never with any crowd. So to experience a Merseyside Derby with the bonkers goodest, <laughs> as we could say. But aye, uh, it was good. Uh, obviously, the atmosphere was unbelievable, and I thought we might have nicked the win. But obviously, the goal got chopped off. But it was a great game, and really enjoyed it. And did you let Luis Diaz it? Uh, after the game, or is he still in there? Aye, he's probably still in <laughs> Nah, to be fair, it was a good game. He's a, he was a tough opponent. Um, obviously, he's a great player. He's playing at a great club as well. So it's just obviously a challenge for me to go and show what I can do and try and nullify their threats. And I feel as if I've done that. You've got, obviously, Ashley Cole, top, top left back. You know, it's a different side of the pitch, but top full back. Leighton Baines is still part of the club as well. Have, have they been helping you as well? Yeah, obviously more Ashley because he's more involved with the first team, but any any time you want you can go chat to any of them and I've been doing my clips each game with Ashley and just kind of working out where I'm improving and where I can improve and it's obviously benefited me as I, as I feel as if you could see so far this season, but it's, it's just great to, to work with someone like that you just want to soak up all the experiences that he's had in football and obviously he's my position as well, so it would be stupid not to. So, big week this week with the Nations League games. How are you feeling going into them? Yeah, obviously we're confident. Um, the group's not been together for a while, so we'll get a few good training sessions in and get the manager's ideas back, drilled into us. Um, but we're all, we're all looking forward to it. Uh, we didn't have a great campaign the last time, but we can hopefully try and get as many points as possible this time. Um, we're obviously look, looking forward to playing at Hamden again. Yeah, just hopefully we can do well in the games and get as many points as we possibly can. Brilliant. I wish Cheers. you all the best. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, I love I love that. And also, big stepdad energy. Like, we can't deny that the way they walk around and chat. And it's like, oh, I'll be your Everton mentor. Uh, David, you would have been in the squad playing when Nathan Patterson made his debut. Yeah. And we're, we're just chatting there. He's 20 now. But it feels like... He's been about for a while already. It, it, it fit right in the squad straight away. I think he's he was best mates with Billy Gilmore, so they two were okay. joined in the Euros squad. That's their first experience of Scotland. I mean, how good is that? Like, yeah. uh, 20 years of nothing, and then <laughs> <laughs> he, he just gets in there first time. But he's yeah, he's got a, an old head in his shoulders. He's very, very talented lad. And he went for big money when he hadn't really played. To Like he was saying there, he, he played for Rangers against Celtic with no fans. Yeah. So to go down to Everton and then get chucked into Premier League's tough. So I, I'm glad to see he started the season really well because he's got a huge, huge future ahead of him. And uh, we've got plenty of experience to you of playing to no fans, haven't we? So, <laughs> uh, how, how was the fringe for you? Did you enjoy it? How dare you? That's a segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was great, man. It was really fun, yeah. It was good, man. Do you think, because obviously Nathan Patterson, 20 years old at that stage, like, you're doing so well just now, but if you did that success when you were 20, how do you think mm. you would have coped? Oh, I'd be even more unbearable, yeah. Egomaniac. <laughs> don't know, I'd be dead in a ditch somewhere, maybe, by now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing, know. annoying you, it's a possibility. <laughs> um, we we'll we we're chatting there, like, people, successes. We're, our next guests have kind of hit the ground running this year. Uh, eight years at number one. Eight years at number one, it feels wow. like, I'll be honest, I've heard their songs so many times, it does feel like eight years. <laughs> Um, we're delighted to be joined by uh, the music sensations of the year. So please give a Scotland HQ welcome to LF System. <laughs> oh, I like you two because it looks like a footballer and his agent. Like, it's a great <laughs> entrance, isn't it? 
Uh, I love it. So, Connor, Sean, how are we? Um, we we tried earlier. Uh, eight weeks at number one. Did you ever envisage that? And you were you kept Beyonce off number one. Is that right? Beyonce, Harry Styles, Drake. Aye, all of them. All just a few big names, <laughs> just a few big names. And now you're here. <laughs> well, the Beyonce yeah. fans gone in for us. Were they actually? Ah, yeah. Were they gone in for I us? Tweet about us so. And what's, like, see, because, so, big song comes out, what, April, May time? Start of May, aye. And then it goes mad. So what? You, what's your social media like now? Do you have someone that manages it for you or do you use it still? I've started getting help with it. Have you? Aye, because I'm terrible at it. Like, just, kind of, just pretend I don't see it. I don't know. Because it's just like, you've got all these messages and, uh, and like, you have to make posts and all that. And we hate social media, so it's like... But you need to be so present there. That's the thing. That's part of the, it's part of the job, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah well, I've, I'm sure everyone uh, is aware of your song because it's played non-stop. Uh, so if you're not aware of it, or if you just fancy hearing it again, if you're not sure what it is, let's have a little bit of Afraid to Feel. I didn't even recognise you since your video. <laughs> 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 I know. Yeah, I had the wiggle. Like, where did you film it? Did you film it after it became successful, or did you have the video ready? It was. It was very last minute. It was after it was already in the charts. I think it was like we had, we had to get it done really quick, and it was kind of like it's either this one or this one. That kind of idea. And we were like, eh, we've never done so one you, before. You went there. When no, it no, no idea. No. Have you seen it before? Aye. Just checking. Aye. No, we got asked for it to be in it. We're like, oh, I don't know if that's a thing. Oh, you should have done it, man. Who's the better dancer between the two? Both Jeremy. Sure. Defo. He's been like Defo. And what's so? I was told this right. A lot of the times when you do shows like this, people do research on you, and a lot of the time it's rubbish. But I want to check if this is right. so. Saying you used to met through football. I uh, could say I that. Know. Aye. I mean, we played, we played in the, the West Lothian League when we were... Against each other or same team? Aye, team? against each other. Okay. Okay. Positions? I was, uh, I went for many. I was brought, brought, I'll go up front. I'll go up front. I'll say and a half. Say a half, yeah. Yeah. Half, you, yeah. yeah. Between the two <laughs> years, I would put you both of that. And then, how, how did this come about? Because you're both football fans, aren't you? Well, you've been attacked by a fly as well. <laughs> I just don't have your teeth that way. <laughs> and then you were so, how, how did the music stuff come about? I well, it was, it's quite a long story, but right, we met playing football, and we started going to clubs and that, and then that's when we, we friends of friends mm. started realising we're in the same type of music. Under his clubbing. Under his clubbing, and, clubbing. and then it was like a case of just like, oh, we're in the same sort of stuff, so we try and make music together. And, mm. Aye, that was pretty much it. And it's worked alright. Aye, DJ away then became pals and they sick each other. It's going to get worse. I'll give you a heads up, man. And what about like uh, Scotland? Obviously, games. You go to many Scotland games. Big Scotland fans. Scotland fans, but I don't really go in much in that. I think uh, I've been to one game, I think, in my life. I can't remember what it was when I was, when I was primary school. And I can't remember what it was. Are you going tomorrow? No, because we were supposed to, but bad, uh, bad planning has uh, made sure that we're now in London. Is that, so, is that your life now? Are you mm -hmm. just away constantly? Pretty much, aye. Uh, David, any advice for the guys? Obviously, an international man of mystery like yourself, travelling. <laughs> uh, how, how do you manage when you're away from home so much? I enjoy London, lads. It sounds a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's great. Um, they've done fantastic. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, you get the Scotland game soon. You're going to come back for the... The Island game, we're still working away. Can't make that one either. We're in, no, we're in Aberdeen. Are we do, we're, we're in Aberdeen. Aberdeen. I know. Uh, we we're in Aberdeen. We're on the wrong show, I think. People from Aberdeen will be watching this. Is it sold out? Aye, it's sold out. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, aye. give it a plug, but you're doing better <laughs> than I am. Hey, I'll be in Aberdeen soon, please come. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, the other thing I wanted to chat to you is about is Scottish dance music is having a resurgence. Like I got, I, I had no idea about this. Uh, you're the longest running dance number one in a decade. Uh, all time. Tied with Calvin Harris. All time? Tied with Calvin Harris, eh? With an R Scott. The way Scott. Yeah, so Calvin Harris playing Hamden, is that is that the dream for you? Is or? That definitely. Oh, would you prefer, would I you mean, prefer uh, Celtic Park? I mean, maybe, I'd maybe parky, we'd fill it, but 1% maybe now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a couple of years, what we could fill it out. Let me fill this week, but. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> nah, it'd be sweet, yeah, yeah. And like touring wise, is that something you were doing before Afraid to Feel hit the big time, or is this all new to you as well? 
it was uh, really spotty. We were playing gigs like maybe once a once a week or so then a couple of times a month or something like that. And then a fifty field comes out and you're getting booked like ten times a day for what and uh, so it's completely turned upside down. It's amazing, isn't it? Busy, yeah. busy, busy. Are you enjoying it? Aye, it's really good. Aye. Aye. Just uh, different from from being uh, my old job. So you, what is that? What so what was the old job then? I was a roofer. And that was mm. on a pedal station. So do you want to give a shout out to anyone tonight? No, they didn't. <laughs> 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 well, customers, I really... He didn't even shout at anyone when he played at Hull. He was there for three years. <laughs> uh, amazing. So we'll, we'll go back to Scotland quickly, obviously, the games. Do you think, do you think we're going to do well? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always optimistic with Scotland. Aye, right? you've got to be. Oh. When you're Scottish, you've got to be optimistic. We're, oh. really, we're always... Um, there's always eyes on us and we're like, oh, they're going to do rubbish, but it's always that. If we're looking at a wee bit of hope that something's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, look at the, the, the penalties, you know what I mean? Have you got a, so. have you got a favourite player over the years? It's good to I could say same as you, Scott Brown. Uh, Scott Brown? Go we'll Cal uh, McGregor. Cal McGregor. <laughs> well, I wonder what team you support. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you are going to play Celtic, at least you've been in the disco like... Uh, <laughs> James Forrest, Maloney. Yeah, Maloney. Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Ralph's there. James McGregor. I love how you named about six Celtic players and then forgot I know, I know, I know. It goes with saying, but... Uh, that's uh, David. So, like, see me go to uh, the Scotland camp and say Rangers have played Celtic recently, and there's been a bit of a rivalry on the park. When you get yeah. to the camp, what happens? Does that all just dissipate? Or? Aye, it's fine. I'd never do. Uh, I would love to tell you that we don't talk to each other and avoid each other, but it's just nah. It's not the way it happens. It's, it's just when everybody's together with Scotland, they just just kind of focused on that, and it just gets put to the side. Yeah, I, I would love to hear stories of drama. I bet like, there is some who just can't say. Some. <laughs> <laughs> just like, can't say. We'll, fi we'll finish this. If David tells any stories, get us on social media. <laughs> we will get straight into that. Uh, guys, we've got a chance to you. Like you were saying earlier, constantly all over the country. Where can people find out more about you? Social media. Two days. Oh, yeah. You're best. so good at it. I, I mean, you might not find much, but that's where we are. <laughs> but uh, I've got Amsterdam, I've got a gig in Aberdeen this Saturday. Uh, and our Scottish one at the end of the month in Dundee. So you're, the Matt three Sands. gigs you're plugging are Dundee, Aberdeen and Amsterdam? No, it's, it's, this, it's this month, so that's why we're... I mean, if you want to look further, we've got loads of others, but we can't say too much, actually. That's one of the problems. Well, you got... Why? What's, what's happening? It's just one of the things. They, they Warehouse don't, project? I, would, I manage this, right. but yeah, it's yeah. one of the things you don't need to say Suckers. too much. Oh, but, I can't wait to see what's happening for you, because huh. it's going to be... I, mean, I get the feeling... Have you ever been to St Andrews and you see... Uh, if you go to one of the cafes, it says, this is where Will's met Kate. I get the feeling I'm going to go to a house in Bathgate. <laughs> the system did my roof, so that's going to be the future. There'll be a few, but yeah. I wouldn't go looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's blame, there's a claim, don't worry. So, uh, tomorrow night is the first uh, men's game that they're going to be wearing the brand new strip, uh, modelled by myself. Thank you. Uh, GD Sports, you can give me £2 million for this, you're welcome. Uh, so, we thought we'd take a little look at the new campaign for the men's national team football shirt. We're outside. Wait it while you wait. Wait it with your friends. Wait it with your best friend. Wait it at the beach. Wait it at home. Wear it on the move. Wear it on the road. Wear it at Hamden. Wear it wherever the next adventure takes us. Wherever you wear it. However you wear it. Wear it for Scotland. Yeah, so you can see that kit being worn tomorrow night. I'm so excited for this game. And I feel we need a chance to get one over in Ukraine after what happened uh, back at the end of May. Uh, we've got a game. We thought we'd... We're quite competitive here at Scotland HQ. We thought we'd kind of round off the show tonight 
with a game. Uh, so first up, we've got Sean from Ellis System. Obviously, the guys, you've heard, they're playing all the big Scottish hotspots, Aberdeen, Dundee, Amsterdam. You know the drill. <laughs> uh, people will be coming up and re uh, requesting songs all the time. So we thought we'd test their lip reading skills. Come on, give us a break. We don't have a big budget. So what we thought we'd do is uh, we're going to get Stuart uh, has come up kindly and I'm going to give him a list of words that he is going to try to say that Sean is going to lip read. Uh, the difference is Sean is going to have these noise cancelling headphones on and uh, I can't believe they've done them that dirty but they're going to be listening to LF system while they do it. How, how does that feel? Does it just feel like a busman's holiday? Uh, it feels a bit big headed. Honestly, <laughs> because, uh, if we get Stu, we'll just give him his own stand up. <laughs> to say that'd be a So we're going to give 45 seconds. Stu will be mouthing the words. Remember, uh, Stu's from Dunfermline, so tune into that accent yeah, I, if you can. Good luck. Um, and we'll see. Uh, do you want the top of the book? Uh, top. Top. Okay. So 45 seconds. Taylor. Nah, sorry, I just wanted to see. Oh, it's got, that's so loud, ah, by the way. Dying. Right, so 45 seconds, starting now. Callum McGregor. Callum McGregor. Yes. The Proclaimers. The Proclaimers. Tartan Army. Tartan, <laughs> Tartan Army. Next, next. Biffy Clyro. Biffy Clyro. Run Rig. Run Rig. Run Rig. Marshall. <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. Again. Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. Yes. Mick Fadden. Mick Fadden. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. No. Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Yes. Dykes. Sing. Dykes. Kings. That's time. That was good. That was, you take a, that was good. That, that was, was impressive. That was good. Uh, the that one you good. missed out at the end was Dykes. Dykes. And what was uh, the one you skipped on, Stuart? Uh, Tartan Army. Oh, you missed that one? No. Other than that, that was pretty flawless. Was, how, how did you feel? Uh, I was in the zone there, but I was, uh, <laughs> was a good tune of it. You were so <laughs> conscious. <laughs> <to focus. laughs> There's something beautiful about I looked over at you and you were so conscious. I kind of forgot what was happening. I turned around and he's just going, Rod Stewart. <laughs> 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 okay, let's swap round shot. Uh, we'll get your score in a minute. I think you'll be the guy to beat, mainly because there's only been one of you gone so far. But uh, Connor, do you want to come up? We'll swap round. Give him a round of applause. Actually, <laughs> really, uh, <that's> good. <laughs> so, not bad, that. Uh, not feel bad. You got really eight. Pressure you got eight here, there. We need to chat. Uh, <laughs> so you looking forward to listening to your music? I always. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get the feeling you're just so happy to be anywhere, and I love it. It's so good. What did you make of how you did? Uh, I, I probably definitely got to do better than me. So right, let's see. So you've got eight to beat. You've got forty-five seconds. Let's get the headphones on. Stu, on you go. Ready? Yeah. Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond. Yes. McGinn. McGinn. John McGinn. <laughs> 500 miles. 500 miles. No way, man. 500 <laughs> miles. 500 miles. Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris. <laughs> the next <laughs> Hamden Park. Hamden Park. Tierney. Tierney. Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney. Afraid to feel. Afraid to feel. Yep. Lewis Capaldi. Lewis Capaldi. I can boogie. I can boogie. I can boogie. <laughs> Next. Craig Gordon. Craig Gordon. Oh, I can I boogie. Should, I should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? Wasn't bad. I've genuinely never seen anyone have noise cancelling headphones on. Lean in to hear <laughs> a little bit better. Split the eyes, So, uh, Sean, you got eight. Do you think Connor beat you? Mate, were you watching? Like, of course it's not close. <laughs> uh, uh, eight, six. So, oh, uh, Two you went on. Uh, we didn't have a prize earlier, but I've actually requested one. So, the prize is, uh, you've actually got uh, an Andy Robertson uh, miniature figure. Um, I'll be honest, it's absolutely terrifying. But uh, <laughs> we'll take it into camera. If we can zoom in which camera's best. This one over here. So right there, you can get them online. LF System will sell them. And if you go to any <laughs> petrol station in the Lothian area, you'll be able to get them. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining uh, Scotland HQ tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, big thanks to our guests. First of all, we had Stuart McPherson.
Uh, Scotland legendary goalkeeper David Marshall. And Connor and Sean from LF Systems. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, the big game start kick off 7.45 tomorrow and 7.45 on Saturday. Uh, good luck to the men's team, fingers crossed. And uh, if we don't speak before the women's team in their semi final, good luck to them. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Ray Bradshaw. Good night. Yeah. Uh -huh.